and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our set review of Rising Tides. That's the name of the first set for Legends of Runeterra, first expansion set. I suppose you can call it, it is the Rising Tides. So we're going to be going through every single card, um, region by region, and talking about them, discussing them, discussing how they could see play in different decks and everything like that. Um, as far as the order goes, um, up here at the top, we're going to, this first video, we're going to have uh, all the cards from Freljord, Noxus, and Shadow Isles. There's about, about 10 each for for that for uh, those regions and then we're going to do Piltover and Zon, Ionia and Demacia in our second video again about 10 for each region and then we're going to have Bilgewater and we're going to split up Bilgewater into two videos we're going to have a part one and part two um, where we have uh, you know split them up to be about half and half in each because there's a lot more cards so we'll have four videos for those of y'all on YouTube um, Anyway, let's start with Freljord. So we're going to start with the champion spell for these other six regions. We're going to start with the brand new champion, and then we're going to go CMC-wise um, up the curve. So, uh, But we we'll want to go with the champion first so we can kind of focus on the champion and with the other cards that we discussed, focus on synergies with our new champion. So we have Sewani as our champion here. Six mana, five, six. Pretty good body. Um, it's already, you know, leveled up Lux, basically, you know, like a 5-6 is, is huge for 6. And whenever you play it, you give an enemy Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. Uh, vulnerable is a new keyword that we'll see quite a bit in this set. It's the enemy can challenge this unit, forcing it to block. So basically, um, you give you give the Vulnerable to, um, you know, one of your enemy, your enemy units. And then any one of your creatures can challenge that unit. So between challenger and vulnerable, it's going to be even more difficult to keep, um, just to keep allies in play for a longer period of time. But vulnerable is real powerful because it turns all of your cards, you know, like let's say, let's say you have like an Ash, for example, and you don't, you know, like usually you have to just open attack with Ash. And even though you can frostbite a couple of things, they can still block with anything else. Like maybe you frostbite a couple of bigger creatures, but they still have like a three, two, they get to block your Ash with, and that can be annoying. But if you give vulnerable to something that's frostbitten or any, anything at all, even a smaller unit, um, then your Ash can safely, or at least more safely attack and challenge the smaller unit. And you don't have to worry about it trading with something bigger. Um, so, uh, you know, pretty, pretty good card just as just this part, you know, kind of even looking before the level up, you basically can use Sewanee as a removal spell right away. You play it and then you attack with it. Like you frostbite, whatever you want, um, and then, uh, challenge it. And Sewanee should be big enough at a five, six to be a removal spell. Um, but the level up is whenever you've damaged the enemy nexus in five different rounds this game. Um, which that's that's not like real easy to do, but we'll see like Bilgewater has some some new cards um, that can can help you do a little bit of damage to the enemy nexus. And and that's kind of a theme with some some other cards like we we've, we've seen. Uh, we'll talk about um, a, a new champion Gangplank that has basically the same level up. Um, so there, there are like different ways to do so a little bit of incidental damage to the enemy nexus to help uh, trigger Sawani. Sawani does not need to be in play for this level up. Um, it's just whenever you've damaged the enemy nexus five, you know, just you know round one, round two, you know, like that kind of stuff. Sawani does not need to be in play to see that. <laughs> Mushrooms do not work. Do not work. That was something that we we thought about for a while, but. Um, as far as I know, mushrooms don't work. I guess if y'all think that they do work, you let me know. Um, all right, so then our leveled up Sawani is now a 6-7. Still has the same playability. And then the first time I see you damage the enemy nexus each round of frostbite all enemies. That's kind of a, a weird um, thing. Now, that can, of course, be really useful with a leveled up Ash. But like if you damage the enemy nexus while you're attacking, then after you get done attacking, frostbiting all enemies isn't going to be valuable. So you have to have 
non-combat ways to be able to deal damage to the enemy nexus before you attack for that to be valuable um but yeah, yeah, that can't just be a finisher. That basically makes blocking absolutely impossible uh, if you get to do that. So yeah, you really want to play this card with a way to do non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus. Not only... Oh, whoops. I wanted to just go back to the... the not only for the level up, but then also for uh, this ability, because you want to trigger this before you attack. Um... Yeah, that's true. That that is true. That's that's a good point, Marpoletti. So this this also triggers as soon as like one of your units deals damage. That that's true. This does trigger during combat. Um like if you're like if the leftmost unit isn't blocked, um and it it does damage to the enemy nexus, then immediately all the others are frostbitten during during combat because you know how damage goes from left to right. Um, I guess for y'all viewing this is probably left to right um so yeah like maybe you have an overwhelmed creature the one on the left or maybe you uh, have some challenger and vulnerable stuff where they can't block the one on the left and you that that uh, unit gets to strike you know so you maybe you want to put like your weakest thing over there on the left that they don't want to block because they have to block everything else and then boom frostbite all the other enemies so that that does let that does have some really tricky play patterns and everything so that is that is pretty nice and then Sawani's so um, champion spell is Fury of the North. So four mana burst, give an ally plus four plus four this round. It's not like a that's not a, a wonderful spell um, because it is just a this round. Uh, four mana for the spell. There's a lot of competition at at four mana for for other spells um, and everything. Like this is some. You know, like you'd rather see the three mana plus three plus three than the four mana plus four plus four. Like that, that extra mana for the extra plus one plus one isn't really worth it. There's not, um, you know, like that that fourth pointed power and toughness isn't really that big of a deal. Yeah, very vanilla. Um, we'll have to see what kind of what kind of decks that really goes in. But I'm not super excited about Fury of the North seeing. A whole lot of constructed play um you know it can be used as kind of like a heal spell also if you if you are playing a deck that's trying to buff up your units quite a bit and then you have something that's taken four damage you can play this and then that toughness can be permanent buff but yeah i i kind of agree i think for for three man like we're really looking at this for three mana uh more being what we want but Anyway, all right. So that's so that's our first champion. So let's go on over to our first our first card, first non-champion, caught in the cold, which, for some reason, this this is the only card that doesn't have like the left and right arrow, which is annoying. Um. So caught in the cold is two mana, slow speed. Um, give an enemy unit frostbite and vulnerable this round. So, um. You know, it's just, it's basically um, Sewani's playability, but you just spend two mana on it. So this is also slow speed. There is the the slow speed um, card that, that doesn't really see play right now that's two mana, that's frostbite an enemy, and then if, it's, if it has zero power, it does four damage to it. I think this is better than that. Um, you know, it does the frostbite and then the giving anything vulnerable lets you, uh, basically, basically you can kind of use this as a removal spell. Um, you know, if, if you have large enough units. So playing this with a, a bigger creature deck, you know, like Avros and Hearth Guards and, and stuff like that is probably exactly where you want to be. But I think this is, this is pretty useful. Um, not only does it help trigger Ash if you need to, but again, this kind of card does work well with Ash, like giving, giving the opponent... Uh, units vulnerable um, does help out whenever you have a card like Ash, where you want, where like Ash really um, incentivizes you to attack, but you also don't want your Ash to die in a combat. So this card could help. So I like this card. I think this is a, a pretty reasonable card. I don't think it's going to um, light the game on fire because you know it's caught in the cold. But it's a it's a 
very useful card. All right, so I have to actually click on over here. <laughs> hey, what's up, boot? All right, we got a Ruthless Raider, a two mana, three, one. And it has Overwhelm and Toughness. I'm surprised this over here doesn't have Overwhelm or Toughness, but I think they're still kind of, I think this, this is still kind of new, I guess. Yeah, new set to Marrow. Got that hype. So I I don't expect Ruthless Raider to really see any constructed play. This looks like a card that's going to be a, a good filler card for Expeditions. But the two mana slot in a Freljord is has a lot of good options, whether it's talking about Averroes and Sentry or um, the Ice Veil Archer. Those are both probably better options than, than Ruthless Raider. Um, but yeah, she is tough, which is like, so that's nice not dying to like a Vile Feast being a one mana thing. Um, but yeah, this is, I think this is just filler for, for Expeditions, like a, a good body for Expeditions, but I don't think we're really putting this in constructed decks because there's better options. All right, shared spoils. Um, two mana, burst speed, grant the top three units of your deck plus one, plus one. I like that. I mean, I just like that kind of card. I just, I just like the, uh, the ability. I'm not sure how, you know, how powerful that is for a spell. Um, it does have plunder, draw one of them. So, you know, like it's, um... Uh, that makes the spell a lot better. So plunder is a new keyword, and it doesn't tell us about that keyword right here. But basically, plunder means that if you have dealt damage to your enemy nexus, so if you've you know dealt damage to your opponent this turn, then that's how you have your plunder uh, turned on. So you have to deal damage to the opponent first, and then cast shared spoils, and then you get to draw um, one of those units that you also uh, pumped and gave plus plus one plus one. Um, so yeah, if, if you can have, if you can reliably have the plunder turned on two mana draw card, you know, just basically cycling is really not that, you know, like, that's not bad. Just, you know, even if it's just vanilla two mana draw one card, it's not like, that's, that's pretty fair, honestly, like for spent for spending f spell mana and everything, you wouldn't put that in your deck, but once you start, you know, you give yourself another ability, grant the, the top three units of your deck plus one plus one, that's a pretty nice ability. Um, Orphalade says a cool thing about that is if you only have a really few units in your deck, like Heimer or Lux or something like that, then this could be a, a, a fetch card. That is true. Like you can basically use this as a tutor. If you have, that is true. If you have basically hardly any units in your deck, um, but you know, you pair this with like Piltover and Zon or, or like, you know, you, you have direct damage, you damage your opponent, cast shared spoils you can just basically draw into your champion. You know, if you're basically, if you have this in like in a deck, like the, um, we played a deck the, the other day that was Starlet Seer and Trindamir, and that was it because we wanted our Starlet Seer. We want to play a lot of spells and we had our Starlet Seer to always, uh, pump Trindamir. Now that deck wasn't very good, but this would be like a perfect card for that kind of deck or like just that kind of strategy where Sherrod Spoils could draw it, it could help you find your Starlet Seer, like your really important units. Like if you're if you're like a combo deck with just a few units that are really important, um, you could kind of play this. Maybe have like a two card two card combo type deck. Um, that's actually really cool, you know. So it does you know it gives you like the deck building restrictions, right? Because you can't just play a whole bunch of units like that. But if you just want to play like only Heimerdinger and you know. Something else, or like just like you're playing like an Ezreal deck, like a, um, you know, like a, a frostbite heavy Ezreal deck, and you want to use this as like a way to draw Ezreal. There is, um, there is Entreat, of course. So there's already two mana burst speed draw a champion. So there's already that, but this can this can get non champions as well, and you know it does other things. It gets your units plus one plus one and everything like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, uh, no, you, so you don't get to choose which one of the three. It gives you just a random one of the three. 
uh, you don't get to choose which one. Okay, so yes, yeah, so there could be some uses here for shared spoils. Yeah, you definitely have to kind of build around it, and it gives you some restrictions there, but... Um, I guess kind of last thing, like comparing this to Omenhawk, Omenhawk of course sees a ton of play. Omenhawk's one of the very best friendly yard cards, and Omenhawk is a one mana one one that grants the the top two units of your deck plus one plus one. So this is one more mana, but it's spell mana. And remember, spell mana like spells can since you can cast spells with spell mana, um, like a two mana spell and like a one mana unit are you know like they're they're kind of close to the same cost um you know spell mana is less valuable than regular mana um yeah but that that yeah that other card you yeah with omen hawk you get a body so you get to block you get to attack all that kind of stuff this you draw a card um i think that omen hawk's better but you can kind of see some some similarities where if you're like a spell heavy deck if you're a deck with like um again with like silent uh star knight seer sorry with like starlight starlight seer where you are incentivized to play a lot of spells this card could um could be something you're looking for all right ember maiden three mana three two round start deal one to everything so that means one to you one to your opponent one to every single um Every single creature on the board, including Ember Maiden. Ember Maiden will do one damage to itself, because it's one damage to everything. Um, so this card can only stay out for two turns. So even if you're so like that's like the huge downside. Is your opponent can basically just ignore this, and in two turns, um, it's just gone. And you just lost a card, you know, uh, unless you can, you know, pump it up and you know make it bigger with all the different pump stuff that Freljord has. Um, but yeah, this is great against spiders. This is great against spiders. And then two other reasons why you really want this. Yep, plunder. Yep, all the plunder cards. Obviously, you, you know, the, this triggers all the plunder stuff in here in Bilgewater. And we'll talk about there's a lot of plunder. Um, so that, that's a big time keyword. So this could be an important card for that. And then, of course, the champions like Sawani that we just talked about. Sawani. Um, this is a way to be able to deal damage to your opponent in more rounds like rounds where you're not attacking to help level up Sawani and then you know the other champions that are like that there's a whole lot of deal one damage to things just not only like in this set like one damage to all of your um opponents you know creatures or blockers or one damage to a bunch of them there's a whole lot of deal one damage to stuff and so uh right now how Legends of Runeterra, like the metagame, one, there's a lot of one toughness things. Going wide is really important with stuff like Brood Awakening and things like that. And so it'll be interesting to see how this set changes that uh, with all of the one damage um, cards, because it's going to be less valuable to play things that die after they take one damage. It could mean that cards that have toughness become start becoming more valuable. Remember, toughness means they just take one less damage from every source. So instead of taking one damage, you take zero. So maybe toughness is just a keyword that becomes more valuable um, after the set. And then yeah, then yeah, good good call, Durilia. And then there's there's other good synergies like like all the crimson cards, of course. Um, you know, putting Freljord Noxus together, this could this could really help out like the crimson cards. Um, that the crimson cards those are like the creatures that whenever they take damage and survive the damage then they give you an, an added ability um an added value and so yeah this this definitely fits perfectly with uh with noxus and those yeah or or pair it with chain vest there you go got chain vest your ember maiden so it doesn't die all right so fear of the north talked about that it's a it's kind of an expensive pump spell at four mana but um yeah, I'm not sure how much play this will really see. Even if, if it was like... Even if it was like 3 mana, give plus 2, plus 2 this round, I think I would like it a little bit more. Just that 4th that mana, that's when you start getting a little too expensive for 
card like this, but we'll see. All right, Wolf Rider. I think this card is really good. I really like this card. So four mana, four, three, plunder, get an empty mana gem. And it has overwhelm. So, you know, it has, it, it can trample. So like that's, that's a pretty decent body. Four mana, four, three, overwhelm. The four mana slot just in general is a slot where there's not like a, a ton of great options, but Freljord is like the region that, um, that's, that's like the, the one region that's like the exception because Freljord has some good four drops. Um, Babbling Bjerg and Ash. But there's a lot of other regions that the four mana slot isn't uh, spectacular. Um, but yeah, obviously, yep. Yep, good call there, Marpoletti. Like the 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 curve, you know, like the curve that they're trying to, to say to set up is go Ember Maiden on three, round start, you do one to everything, and then boom, you drop Wolf Rider and you get an empty mana gem. That's really valuable. You're like that's a ramp card. If you if you can turn this thing on, that's really valuable. Getting that empty mana gem, um, you know that's that's basically just like you know for people to play Magic, that's rampant growth. Um, you know that's that's get an extra get an extra land drop, and uh, yeah, I don't really like this art either. I don't know if this does anything. No, they haven't set that up yet. Yeah, art, art could be better. But, um, you know, like this is like a wolf rider and like we don't, we barely get to see this little wolf. I mean, I guess, I bet the full art's probably better. Yeah, the full art's probably better with this card. Um, yeah, and there's, so, uh, yeah, I really like this card. I just think it's really good. I, I think that getting an empty mana gem is really valuable. Think of how much play Catalyst of Aeon sees, and that's a five mana spell that all it does is get you an empty mana gem and lets you gain three life. And it's not like the gain three life's that valuable, but people play a five mana spell to just grab an empty mana gem. If you can turn on Wolf Rider, um, this gives you a, a real card that trades with um, something the opponent's doing, a four mana, four, three, and also gets you that. I like that card quite a bit. All right, up next we got Ursine Spirit Walker, five mana, four six. If you plunder, transforms into Stormclaw Ursine. Ursine, 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 Ursine. I don't know. So it's basically it's a it's a. Um, again, you want to play this. You know, you want to have plundered before you play this. Hopefully, let's talk about if you don't hit plunder. We're talking about a five mana four six, and that's not like the worst thing ever. It's not. It's not great. Um, you know, if you kind of compare it to other five drops like Avaros and Hearthguard, you'd much rather have the five five that that does stuff. You know, so like sometimes you're just gonna have to play this as a four six, and it's it's worse than other five mana cards, but it's not horrible. It's you know, it's a that's a pretty large body that will just kind of get in the way. So the down. So there's not too much downside. But the upside, oh, whoops, I gotta click this. The upside is you have a five mana six six with overwhelm, and all your other uh, allies with five plus power have overwhelm. That is pretty nice, especially for playing like a, again, like an Avros and Hearthguard and, um, a, you know, Trifarian Assessor. You know, you're playing like Assessor and you're drawing cards for every ally that you have that's five plus power. Yeah. Um, camera's lagging a little bit. I can refresh that. Okay, there we go. Thanks, B-squared. Uh, yeah, so, like, this this is obviously a really good 5-drop. Um, you know, kind of similar to, like, if you, if you think about, like, the real good uh, 5, or I guess, I was thinking of even a 6-mana card, like, Scythria at 6-mana, it's kind of similar to the to this and power level and so you get this at five this, this so this is really really strong if you can turn on plunder so this these plunder cards have um they kind of have some high variance if you can't turn on plunder you're looking at you know the the three the three mana four three or a five mana four six not special but you know pretty mediocre cards like they're just like expedition filler bodies but if you can turn on plunder, I'll get used to this. If you can turn on plunder, 
Um, we're talking about a whole lot better card. I like this one though. I think this this is just a, this probably just slots as like your other five drop, along with again along with like Avaros and Hearthguard and and Trifarian Assessor and stuff like that. Yeah, Plunder is high stakes, which which does make um, cards like that three drop that do one to everything. It does make those cards more valuable. Like for example, but example like if you're playing this with Noxus, maybe you start playing some Blades Edges. Yeah, maybe this makes Blades Edge a lot more valuable of a card because Blades Edge can sometimes trade with a card at just one mana. It's that's the one mana instant speed do or fast speed do one damage to anything. And so sometimes you're just going to use that as a removal spell, but other times maybe you just play it to turn on um, Plunder to be able to you know just do, spend one mana and play that. So it makes a card like Blades Edge a lot more valuable. All right, so we talked about Sawani. We got Aurora Porealis. <laughs> I have not seen this card. Oh my gosh, look at that art. Look at those Poros. Seven mana burst, create two random Poros from any region and two Poro snacks. That is awesome. Uh. It's not necessarily good, you know, like the Poros aren't necessarily good. It's not gonna be like real competitive or anything, but that's gonna be fun. We're gonna we're gonna be we're definitely gonna build a meme deck Monday with this. <laughs> More Poros. Um Poro Snacks is is like the Poro payoff. If you don't know Poro Snacks, it's three mana grant all of your Poro allies everywhere plus one plus one. So all of the ones that can be even generated later or in your deck or you know, all of them everywhere. They get plus one plus one so you have to spend seven mana and then create means that uh put them into your hand so it's like this is basically a seven mana draw four you draw two poro snacks and you draw two random poros from any region it's like seven mana draw four is you know good you know think about like how um with with poro decks um like this this is like a you know auto obviously an auto include the poro decks but like the last time i played a poro deck i was splashing um p and z we were splashing for the eight mana draw three because we trying to trying to refill our hands so this is a seven mana draw four it's just it's just not draw cards from your deck it, you're always drawing the same thing you're always drawing two poro snacks you know that for sure and then you know you're getting two random poros um so yeah so create it yeah so creating means, yeah, I would say, yeah, summon would be, summon, summon would mean go to the board. Create means go to your hand. Um, and no, so the Poros aren't anything, gr anything great. And this isn't going to be a competitive card, but this looks like a really fun card to, to play. All right. And then we got the Tusk Raider. <clears throat> All right. So eight mana, seven, seven. So eight mana, seven, seven is not bad it's you know it's not it's not absolutely amazing it's just it's just basically where you kind of expect an eight eight mana card to be so you know it's just kind of there on on curve now the whole it has a plunder uh etb trigger and a play etb trigger let's start with the play so whenever you play the tusk raider automatically you draw a sawani so um you know you just get sawani from your deck Obviously, like the, the champion Sawani, you just get to draw Sawani whenever you play Tusk Raider. Now, uh, a couple of things about these these things, if, if you don't realize, um, you do have to have a Sawani in your deck to be able to draw it. it this is not create a Sawani. This is draw. So that means there has to be one in your deck. So like, let's say you're only playing one Sawani in your deck and you've drawn it already. Then whenever you play Tusk Raider, you're not going to draw a Sawani. You have to have one in your in your deck uh, to actually draw. Sejuani? Um, do I pronounce the J? Um, so that, that's something about that. Sejuani. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
And then, you know, it has the plunder effect. So again, if we can if we can turn on plunder, that makes this even better. This plunder effect is ridiculous. Double the power and health of all of the allies in your deck. <laughs> so think of Avros and Hearthguard that gives plus one, plus one to all the allies in your deck. This just takes the power and toughness and just doubles them. And it's important that that, that effect is first also, because if you have the plunder turned on and you can play a Tusk Raider, then you will double the power and health of all the allies in your deck, and then afterwards you'll draw a Sawani from your deck. So your Sawani will be a 10-12 uh, that you draw with the Tusk Raider. Um. Or Sejuani. I'll, I'll, start, I'll try to get used to that. I'll try to get used to that. Um. <laughs> yeah. Playing Tusk Raider and then playing a War Mother's Call, yeah, like that would be that's living the dream, that's for sure. Um, now, plunder triggers. I guess I'm not exactly sure if plunder is a summon or a play. It's probably a summon, you know, just for things that, you know, I was just just kind of wondering for if you could hit like plunder triggers off of like you know for cards that come in off of War Mother Call. Okay, you just checked. Thanks, Commander. It's okay. So, Commander just checked. Um, plunder is on play. It is not a summon, so it's not. Uh, if you War Mother's Call um, and get something later, you will not uh, get any plunder triggers. Okay, it is play. Good to know. So I think every single region has one of these new cards where whenever you play it, you draw one of the champions. Um, and they're, they are very good, but I don't know, I don't know how good. Cause the thing is, is like this card's really powerful, but we're talking about an eight mana card. Eight mana cards need to be really, really powerful to see any kind of play. But even then, I mean, it's still an eight mana card. I'm not sure about this. This is one of one of the one of the uh, tutor effects that I like more than others that we'll go over. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, you know, it has a really good size and everything. That is really nice tutoring for your champion. Like that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, Freljord does have a lot of ramp and and stall tools also to get to eight mana, and so that's why I do like this more than other ones. Like like for example, playing this or Trindomir. Right? Like, Trindomir costs 8 mana. Like, what would you rather have at your top end? Honestly, I think that most of the time I'd rather have a Tusk Raider because I, I want my, you know, I want my, like, 8 drop doing doing more than just attacking and blocking. I want it to be card advantage. Like, card advantage is, is king. That's that's just that's how it is in, in card games. Um... Uh, like, this card, I mean, it doesn't really... This card's not bad against, like, recall stuff, like Will of Ionia, Vengeance. This card's not bad against that because these triggers happen whenever you play it. Like, if you play a Tusk Raider and then they Vengeance your Tusk Raider, you still drew a Sawani and you're basically even mana. Like, that's not bad. And that's, at, like, the worst case scenario. That You also may have just doubled the power and health of all the allies in your deck also, which would be ridiculous. Um... Yeah, but Trindomir is re Trindomir is really easy to to deal with. It's it's very easy to deal with. I I I don't I'm not a huge Trindomir fan, but I like I like I like ETB effects on my very large. Like if I'm spending a lot of mana on something, I like the ETB effects. All right, but there we go. So there's Freljord. Let's head on over to Noxus. So let's see. I click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. Oh, let's start with the champion first. Get out of here. Swain. There we go. All right, so... Uh, Swain, five mana, three, six. You know, not, not like the best body. We can think like Thresh. Um, think of how hard it is to kill a Thresh whenever Thresh comes down on turn five. That's going to basically be Swain also, because we got we have a 3-6 here. 
Uh, Swain doesn't have Challenger like Thresh. We have Fearsome instead. So it also makes Swain a little harder to block, where you can't just chump block Swain. Um, you know, you have to block it with something power three or more because of, because of the Fearsome. And so you're probably blocking it with, you know, like a 3-3, a 4-4, three, three, a four, four, you know, something like that. You don't get to just throw a 1-1 one, one in front of Swain. Um, and then, <clears throat> so if you do attack with Swain and Swain gets through, they don't block. And also, like, the opponents are also very incentivized to block Swain and, you know, throw like a 3-3 three, three in front. Because... Nexus Strike, deal three to the enemy Nexus. So if they don't block, if you don't block Swain, it's basically doubles the damage. You know, like you do three also. Um, but of course that, uh, that three that you get to do with Swain is non-combat damage. And so that's what we see here. The level up is whenever we've done 12 non-combat damage this game. So like, that's just, so that's just like you in general, if you've done 12 non-combat damage anywhere, this game and so that 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 means you can be doing damage to your own um uh your own your own allies um anything so like this pairs well with like that that three two freljord card that says do one to everything because that's non-combat damage that one damage everywhere adds up towards leveling up swain um yeah it does it does count self damage like transfusion which is like do one to your own thing yes that would that would count with swain that's non-combat damage yep um uh yeah this with ember maiden uh right uh strikes strikes are um like what do you mean by strikes like uh <laughs> you're just excited for ember maiden if you're talking about like the the two mana um like the the demacia two drop uh single combat that's the card single combat like the uh two creatures strike each other that would be non-combat damage yeah yeah that's non-combat damage all right so whenever swain is leveled up this art is pretty epic then Swain is a 4-7 now fearsome. So, you know, it gets plus one, plus one with the level up. That's, you know, pretty basic. When we deal non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus. So anytime, anything that you have that does non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus. That could be Swain's Nexus Strike Trigger. <clears throat> um, which uh, I guess wouldn't really be on here. But um, anytime you do non-combat damage to the enemy Nexus, you stun the strongest back row enemy. All right, so every, so you know, like a blade's edge, do one to you, stun, um, stun your back row enemy, like the strong, the strongest enemy. This nexus strike is ridiculous, though. So if you've leveled up Swain and Swain then attacks and is unblocked, then you do three to all enemies. Uh, that includes that includes their nexus and includes every single one of their uh, creatures as well. So, the thing about Swain is that's going to be really hard to pull off. It's not easy to do 12 non-combat damage in a game. That's not very easy. And so, it's going to be, that's going to be a really tough level up. Um, you're really going to have to focus on playing cards that do a lot of damage, um, you know, to, to all sorts of creatures. You know, Avalanche could be something there you know like where avalanche can do two damage to a lot of things like maybe your opponent's going wide with spiders and you avalanche a bunch of things you know stuff like that you're, you're really going to need to build around being able to do damage but then once you have that like your opponent's probably just going to block swain you know like it's it's hard to like have swain also get through um it's, that's not easy um but if you can attack you know if you can actually hit your opponent with this then the th the three damage to all enemies is pretty awesome. Um, I kind of I kind of envision like they're gonna block with like a three three one turn and then the next turn block with like a four four you know kind of thing like they'll just like two blocks. Um, obviously it has fearsome and you'll have your other cards, but I feel like actually hitting the opponent with Swain is gonna be pretty difficult. Um, you already know with Thresh like. 
think about think about all right so like think about like how you know thresh is a five mana three six thresh has the challenger but you usually only like challenge like one time it's kind of hard to actually get two challenges with thresh without thresh dying in between well think if instead of challenging if you were just open attacking with the thresh it's like even with the fearsome i feel like it's gonna be kind of difficult for to get you know like swain's gonna be dying through damage and stuff i don't know i feel like it's gonna be kind of tough overwhelm does count as nexus strike yes <laughs> some works map there you go yeah you can give him overwhelm uh might yeah pairing swain with might would be really good that's that is true that does really increase the value of like might um that is true um, but anyway, this is this is one of my favorite champions. I mean, I just like Noxus as a region. I think Noxus is a pretty cool region, and Noxus is also it's the weakest region right now. Um, and so I, I want some help for Noxus, and I'm hoping Swain provides it, but I'm I'm skeptical. But we'll be we'll be trying out Swain. I like I like this card, and I like the region, but I'm just I'm skeptical how well Swain will really play in game. And Swain's uh, champion spell is Ravenous Flock. Maybe Ravenous Flock? I don't know. One mana fast, deal four to a unit if it's damaged or stunned. Um, shuffle a Swain into your deck. So the thing about this is if your opponent doesn't have any units that are damaged or stunned, this thing does nothing, right? Like you, they have to have something that's either damaged or stunned and then you can do four to it. So, regular, obviously, like, you know, you'll have, like, your Swain's one, but re regular Ravenous Flock, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it, I guess it kind of depends on how much damage you really have. Like, again, this is just another card that makes Blade's Edge even better. Blade's Edge seemed like it got a lot, but, yeah, again, if you're playing, like, Avalanche... <clears throat> that kind of stuff like it, it's just gonna you know you're gonna have to kind of build your deck around ravenous flock you're not just throwing ravenous flock and this isn't just like a like a mystic shot type removal spell that you just it just goes everywhere you just put it in every single kind of deck um yes that is true yeah yep yasuo stun damage would count towards swain yeah um this is basically a better version for the noxus card that kills something damaged for three mana right kind of it will, you know, potentially. This has the ability to, to finish things off for one mana, but that card, Noxion Guillotine, has two big upsides to it. It one Nox like I think Noxion Guillotine may be better just kind of in general because Noxion Guillotine, you can cast it multiple times in a turn. Um, you know, like you can play it, it recreates into your hand. So you can like play it, um, play it again, or you can play it and then like use like uh, rummage and shuffle it away or, or you know like rummage it away things like that but then noxion like the thing about units that are damaged that you're trying to kill is that's this is really like this isn't that useful on things that just have four or less health because you you can probably have a lot of things that do four or less damage but noxion guillotine can take something that's like usually like like a trindamir that you know like that's like a, a leveled up trindamir that's like a nine nine that normally with normally you'd be like i have no way i can deal with a nine nine well you can just do what get like one damage on the thing and then noxion guillotine it so there's there's some huge upside to noxion guillotine um but of course this is really cheap and efficient one mana one spell mana is really really efficient See so a pretty good card. Like this this will see play for sure, but I I don't know if we're like Well, maybe we're going out of our way to play this. It Yeah, this will see play, but you but again, you kind of have to go out of your way. You kind of have to build around it. You got to make sure you have a lot of damage spells. Like I don't think you just like play a deck with like all sorts of units and then just throw some ravenous flocks in there. All right, let's go to the let's go to our All right, so ravenous flock was the the one mana card. Why does it have the arrow? Click on the second card to get the arrow. That's weird. All right, next card, Imperial Demolitionist. Two mana, two, three. Whenever you play it, do one to an ally unit 
to do two to the enemy nexus. This card is pretty great with Swain. Um, this is three non-combat damage. You get to do one to one of your ally units and then two to the opponent. The thing is, if you play this like on turn two and you didn't have a one drop, uh, you know, you're not... Does it... Can it do one damage to itself to an ally unit? Can this target itself? I guess that's... Like, so if you don't have any other allies out... Yeah, it doesn't say other unit. It just says an ally unit. It is an ally unit. So it's a black powder grenade is like the skill. You don't think so? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I could actually see this being able to target itself. We'll have to kind of... You know, like, they don't have... It's not like the best language here. Um... Yeah, other cards like her don't trigger herself itself. Yeah, that's true. Like the other cards that they've designed like this usually cannot target itself. So I'll be so like this language makes it seem like it can trigger itself, but other cards that they've made don't uh, don't really seem like they can trigger itself. So yeah, we'll just have to see. Um, but anyway, this of course works great with the crimson cards. Uh, this is pairs perfectly with crimson. Uh, I think it's Crimson Disciple is the other 2 mana 2-3 two, that whenever it, it survives damage, it does 2 to the enemy Nexus. So if you demolition it, a Disciple, um, you do 4 damage to the opponent. That's a great combo, of course. Um, and then, yeah, help, you know, this, this is definitely a Plunder Enabler. Um... um I'm not sure exactly how Laurent Bladekeeper is worded. Yeah, Bladekeeper says an ally. Okay, so it's worded just like this. Yeah, but yeah, all the When I Survive Damage cards from Noxus, all those Crimson cards, the other ones from Freljord. You know, basically this is just a really good enabler. And it's just a solid 2-drop. Two, 2 mana, 2-3. Two, you can't really ask for that much more for your 2-drop, so. Good card. We'll be putting this in decks. I guess that's I guess that's like the dynamite back there, like demolitionist. I guess she's demolishing stuff. I don't know. Art doesn't really seem like a demolitionist. All right, we got Death's Hand, three mana fast spell. Do two to the en deal two to an enemy unit and one to their nexus. So this is directly competes with Culling Strike and Noxia Guillotine couple other three mana removal spells with noxus you kind of wish that they would have like some two mana or four mana um you know maybe like a four mana make it more powerful um you know so you don't have things overlapping as much um but again this is just another way to to plunder if you need more ways to plunder um this is again a good card with our new champion swain we need we need ways to do uh, damage, right? Non combat damage. This does two, and then one to their nexus. This is, um, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying like two mana. This exact same card. I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying like a, a two mana version of this or a four mana version of this. You know, just just something, just so like every like the removal spells wouldn't all overlap at three. Um. This is a definitely looks worse than Mystic Shots from a versatility standpoint. Where Mystic Shot, you know, you can you could do so many different things with this with Mystic Shot. But if you think about the times where you would just do two damage to an enemy unit with Mystic Shot, this does the same thing. Does two to it, plus you get the the bonus of one to their Nexus as well, which no Noxus is always looking for ways to do damage to the Nexus. Um, yeah, powder, yeah, pairing, yep, well, yeah, that's true. Um, we'll have to remember this one for whenever we go to bilge water and talk about powder kegs. Um, powder kegs, um, are cards that help increase the damage of cards. This death sand, it could be real nice with that. Yeah, a, one powder keg in play would make this a 3-2 split instead of 2-1 split, which... 
you know, can certainly add up. I'm not, I'm not sure how much play this will see, though. You know, I think it's, I don't think it's necessarily better than, um, Culling Strike and Nocturne Guillotine. Like, I'm not sure it's necessarily better than those. But, again, if you build around it and you're really, uh, really need to do damage and you're really focused on dealing damage um this this will uh be a good card to have and i guess that's the other thing i didn't really talk about with ravenous flock is that four damage you know like that's that's another good that's a good chunk to leveling up swain and so you know you kind of start adding these things together and we're starting to um be be able to level up our champion if we're playing swain <laughs> powder kegs the new shroom <clears throat> but yeah on i kind of agree with you arkelud that on its face um if you just look at death's hand of just do two to an enemy unit and one to their nexus and you don't really have synergies um with that just this on its face it's not a very it's probably not good enough to to be played it's not a good good enough card you re so you really need to focus on synergies with that all right, we got Iron Ballista, three mana, four three Overwhelm. Um, you know, this not nothing special here. Um, you know, just a common. I I don't know how much we're really playing Iron Ballista. I kind of like it. Um, I kind of like it. I mean, over Overwhelm's nice with Noxus. <clears throat> The three mana slots in Noxus, and like if you think about like the the PNZ Noxus deck, the four man, the three mana slots aren't good besides the champions. Basically, your three drops you're playing, um, you know, you're really focused on playing like Draven. You know, like that's like your three mana card. There's used Cask Salesman. They, you know, you also play Reckless Trifarian, not being able to block. You just don't really want it. Um, Iron Ballistic could be. Could be a three drop, especially if you're if you're playing like a if you're playing like that kind of aggro deck, and you maybe you're playing like Jinx and Teemo, and so you don't have Draven, and so you kind of need a three mana card. Um, this this could work. Yeah. Um, because honestly, like the besides like Reckless Trifarian, like there's not really other good attacking three mana cards. So I could see I could see putting this in decks because of that. I could see playing it. Yeah, overwhelm overwhelm's good. Yeah, it does yeah, it does help help plunder also. More ways <clears throat> more ways to try to help plunder. Alright, our next spell, another three mana Noxus removal spell. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Never mind. <laughs> Deal three to an ally unit to do three to anything. So, this is... This is, again, something that helps turn on Swain a ton, right? You're doing six total damage. This is something that would work really well with Shadow Isles. You know, the self-sacrifice cards of Shadow Isles, when you're talking about, like, the Undying and uh cursed keeper and things like that things that you want to get rid of um but in like a noxus aggro i don't think we're really playing this card you know like we don't really want to spend three mana kill our own thing to do three to something else like this it doesn't go in a noxus aggro so you again you have to kind of build around this and put this either like yeah yeah you have to basically just put it in like a, a sacrifice kind of theme deck um yeah or like you maybe you'd really need the damage for Swain. But I don't think like we're not just putting this in regular Noxus aggro decks. Yeah, I kinda agree. People in chat don't don't love the payoff and think three damage to itself is too much. And would like it more like two mana. Yeah. So I think the probably the only time we're using this is with like the undying like we really want to destroy our own allies all right the city breaker that's just a cool art cool cool card I like this card city breaker 
four mana, zero five, round start, do one to the enemy at Nexus. I wish this card was better, because I like it a lot, but it's not very good. The obvious thing, of course, is plunder, as we've been talking about. Um, you know, this is just an automatic way to turn on plunder. You're worried about plunder, throw a city breaker in there. Um, your opponent's probably not using too much removal on this, but you never know. Um, the thing is, is this card is probably not going to play that well. It's all it can do is block, you know, we can't attack and it's not even very good at blocking. Well, it does have five toughness. Um, it's, you know, it's fairly easy to kill really weak to like vulnerable. Um, and four mana. Yeah. I'd, it is great for plunder, so we'll have to see how important that is. I guess the other thing besides plunder is this is really good with Sawani and uh, Gangplank, where they need you to deal damage to the enemy Nexus in five different turns. Maybe you put City Breaker in there, but I just feel like there's probably better cards to be playing than this thing. Honestly, so I'll, I'll be pretty surprised if this card sees very much play, honestly. I think people will start with putting this in like their plunder and decks and Sawani decks and stuff like that to start with you know as people try you know play the new cards and this is like you know this obviously screams put me in those kind of decks but i think that as people play this card more they'll realize that it's that just being a four mana oh five like that you're you're spending you're paying for the ability and this is kind of too high of a price to pay for this ability yeah it would be way better if it was at least a one five at least be able to do a little bit of damage um, but this is, it's pretty tough. Pretty tough to play this. Alright, so we talked about Swain. <clears throat> the Armored Tusk Rider. 6 mana, 6, 5, Overwhelm. Armored Tusk Rider uh, has, uh, yeah, so it has Overwhelm. I only take damage from enemy units with 5 plus power. This is awesome. I haven't seen this card. Like this is my first time seeing this card. That's cool. I only take damage from enemy units with five plus power. Yeah, I had not seen this card. There's no stopping a war beast once it's in motion. So that's cool. It has overwhelm and stuff too. So a couple of things with that. That obviously just doesn't take any damage from like Nox and Fervor, right? So like, you know, it. So it says deal three to an al ally unit to do three to anything. So he, like he just doesn't even take any damage. So I don't know. So I guess it. I don't know if that means that like that like the damage doesn't happen. Like I'm not sure how these two cards, you know, deal three to an ally unit to deal three to anything. So does that mean you still get to do the three to anything even if you're not really dealing three to the al ally unit because it can't take the damage? Does that mean that you only trigger three total damage for Swain and not six because it doesn't take the three? Because, uh, yeah, it says that it only takes damage from enemy units with five plus power. So it has to be a, the, the, the only way for Tusk Rider to take damage is it has to be an enemy unit and that enemy unit has to be five plus power. So all your, your spells and your abilities and all that kind of stuff that do damage to stuff. I don't think your Tusk Rider's taking damage. So, you know, like, you have, like, Transfusion, deal one to something. Like, your Tusk Rider's not taking that one. Um, so, yeah, uh, like, with Noxus, all these cards that have, like, these self-damage, you can throw them on the Tusk Rider and not worry about it. I assume that's, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, again, Riot hasn't been the best with, with, um, with language, but that's, that's how, that's how just reading the card, that's what I would assume it works. Maybe it, um, you know, maybe it means it still takes damage from everything else, but it only takes damage from the enemy units with the five plus power, but it still takes damage from everything else. 
Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe it only prevents combat damage. So, like, maybe I'm wrong. I wish that there was, like, clear language with this, but that's kind of the thing about playing a digital game is you just have to, you know, it just has to be programmed correctly digitally. Um, and then, you know, it's not like it's up to us for interpretation, like, if, you know, while you're playing, because it's, it, it will, the program will do it correctly. Um, let's see, um, I guess, like, the way to, how would, how would you clear it up? I guess you would say, uh, prevent all damage dealt to Tusk Rider except from enemy units with 5 plus power. I don't know if, like, prevent damage is even, like, language that they use, though. What's up, Storm? Yeah, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess Walker is correct. The, the language here is super clear. We just know that the right language is not always accurate. So basically, if this, if this is, like, where you can use spells and they will damage the Tusk Rider, I'm going to be really sad. Because the language is really clear of it only takes damage from enemy units of 5 plus power. Um, so if, if you can still, like, get excited and Mystic Shot and kill a Tusk Rider, I'm going to be really sad. Doesn't seem like that should be how it works. Um, yeah, and so like this, this certainly seems to pair well with like Freljord ways to pump this thing up. You know, like with uh, you know Avaros and Hearthguard and stuff like that. If you can, you know, pump up your Tusk Rider, it certainly seems like it could be better because it makes it even harder for for them to kill it. Um, but again, kind of, you know. When you're starting to talk about like a six mana thing with no ETB effect, with no enter the battlefield effect, then you're getting getting to the point where it may be a little weak to like bounce spells and things like that though too. Oh yeah, this plus single combat, that seems awesome. <laughs> yeah, that seems great. Um, yeah, yeah. If, if this doesn't take damage from spells, it's gonna be real good. I hope it doesn't, because it it reads like it shouldn't. So I hope it doesn't. <clears throat> Orok Glinthorn. Six mana, six, six. I guess that's what a Glinthorn looks like, I guess. Anyway, uh, whenever you attack it, stun all damaged enemies. It's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of competition for six mana slots. Again, like the card that we were just talking about. Like, I'd rather be playing Minotaur Reckoner that just stun something every single round. Like, I'd rather have Minotaur Reckoner as my 6-mana six 6-6 six six that has to deal with stun. But maybe you're in the market for more 6-mana six 6-6s six six that stun things. You know, like, maybe your Yasuo deck just needs some more stun. And uh, this can can help. Um, that's kind of about the only place probably where we're going with this Aura Glint Horn. All right, and then our last Noxus card, the Leviathan. I like this card quite a bit. This card is sweet. So eight mana, five, eight with Overwhelm. Whenever you play it, draw a Swain and round starts deal one to the enemy Nexus three times. I love this card. So yeah, so this is our champion draw card. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite cards. <clears throat> so, you know, we get, at, at worst, we get to draw Swain. So, like, that's that's awesome. And we talked about, like, earlier the four mana 05 that does one to the opponent. So you're doubling up the cost. You're spending four more. But this just does so much more. This can actually attack and block. Like, this, we have a 5-8 Overwhelm. Like, that's still a huge body. That's really good. Um... And uh, and then of course you know you get to draw a Swain, just to kind of uh, just kind of remind y'all, you know I, we talked about this before with the Freljord, but this does mean draw from your deck. So if you do not have a Swain in your deck, you do not get a Swain. This is not uh, create a Swain. Um, so you have to have um, you have to have a Swain left in your library, 
and then if you do have one you will just automatically tutor it up you will automatically draw it um yeah i think this i think this is my favorite of the of the the tutor cards um these cards seem the thing about these tutor cards also is they seem absolutely amazing in expedition mode I guess I should point that out. These cards seem like, like if you're playing Expeditions, you should definitely go right after these cards because Expeditions, like they're a little bit slower game. Having late game cards that are powerful is good and having one that just tutors your champion and helps you find your champion in an Expedition, that seems amazing. So um, these are definitely cards to prioritize in Expeditions. And then, uh, yeah, round start, deal one to the enemy Nexus three times. Um, the... You know, so it's not just three to the enemy nexus. It is one three separate times. There's probably ways to um, make, you know, have that increase. Like maybe you're playing, uh, what's the card? Is it Funsmith? Is that the name of the card? Funsmith from PNZ that has all of your skills do an extra point of damage. And so then it would do two to the enemy nexus three times. Um... Yeah, Funsmith. There may be like more kind of cards like that that, that help uh, multiply that damage out. Um, but you know, that's really good. You know, you can drop Leviathan, um, you know, after combat. It's usually really hard to kill units after you play them, after, you know, post combat. So you play this post combat, and then you're probably getting that round start. You're probably not only drawing a Swain right away, but also dealing three to the enemy Nexus right away before they can answer it. And then. Um, you know, go from there. Cool card. Definitely one of my favorites. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's just this huge... So, like, I guess what is the Leviathan? Is it just like a huge ship? It, kind of, it looks like a ship. Um, but I guess it could be like a fortress or something, too. Uh, no, the plunder effects can only trigger once. So, no, it doesn't do... You don't get three plunders... It's not how many times you do damage. It's just if you have done damage, then it triggers plunder. Um, yeah, the, the card arts aren't really working yet. All the tutor cards are boats. Huh. It's a warship. Yeah, see, that's sweet. Dude, if I ever own a warship, which I don't think I will, but I will call it the Leviathan. That's a sweet name for a warship. All right, so there's Noxus, and now let's head on over to Shadow Isles. Let's see what what is Shadow Isles getting. Shadow Isles. Wait a minute. Filters take out Noxus. Okay. All right, let's first go to our champion, Maokai. Maokai. All right, the first time, so four mana, one four. <clears throat> so, okay, let's just start there. Four mana, one four. We are not playing this to attack and block. You can maybe, you know, maybe block with it once, but you can kind of think of this like Heimerdinger, like being the five mana, one three. There's not really much difference in being a four mana, one four and a five mana, one three. That's, that's pretty much the same. So we're, we're basically not attacking or blocking here. Um, the first time you play another ally each round, toss two and summon a sapling. All right, so it doesn't say what toss does, but basically what toss does is it obliterates the the bottom X number of cards from your deck, that, as long as they're not champions. Like, it leaves the champions, but it obliterates the rest. So this is basically, you know, discard, get rid of, like, the bottom two cards of your deck. Um... And then you summon a sapling. Sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> um, all right, so saplings are one mana, two ones that are um, ephemeral challengers. So they're fleet feather trackers that are ephemeral. Like that, like challenger, fleet feather tracker that's ephemeral. So, you know, you get that also with Maokai. So if you're playing Maokai post-combat, that sapling is just going to be wasted. So you really want to play Maokai pre-combat, either on offense or defense, because you can use that thing to block. Um, but, you know, like that 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 other body will be wasted. <clears throat> and 
And so it levels up when your units have died, which, you know, like that, that ephemeral unit will, will die. Or your cards have been tossed 25 times this game. That is... That's kind of a difficult level up, but it's not as bad as I thought. When I first read Maokai, I honestly thought that um, how I, I read, like, what is Toss? And Toss says, like, you know, the bottom two non-champions of your deck. I thought that those were just units, you know, like, with non-champions. I was like, man, you have to play, like, a whole bunch of units. But no, it, it gets rid of spells also. Like, spells also get tossed. Um... Yeah, but that's, so, so, basically, so that's not as hard, because I was thinking, man, you have to toss 25, I was like, man, you're going to have to play a whole lot of units if you need, need those to die and be tossed 25 times. Um, and yeah, you're probably right there, B-squared, yeah, you can probably level this up before, like, level, before turn 10. Um, you know, Maokai doesn't have to be in, in play to see this, especially, and so, especially if you have, like, a lot of ways for, for your units to die, um, there's a lot of cards that, that, and we'll talk about them as we go through here. There's a lot of cards that deal with tossing. So, um, when you do level up Maokai, Maokai turns into a two-five with regeneration. I love that. I think that's that's really nice to have on Maokai. Because again, you're not really trying to attack and block too much, but now with, once you have regeneration, you can kind of block um, a little bit more, uh, you know, freely, and and your Maokai will come back. All right, when, when I level up, obliterate the enemy deck, leaving four non-champions. That is crazy. That is a huge payoff. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to um, just, you know, level up Maokai and then, boom, obliterate the entire enemy deck, except for they just get to keep four cards, four non-champions. Those can be units. Those could be spells. I think it's, it's just random. You know, they get to keep four cards. As, but they're non non champion cards, so the cha all the champions in the deck get obliterated, and also now every single round you get a two one. So pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Um, yeah, this is this is tossing twenty five or just twenty five units died. You know, so you add them together. <clears throat> You know, so like every every time you have something die, like every time a sapling, you know, you, you get a sapling that dies, um, you know, all you know, all sorts of tokens that die, you know, you play like Brood Awakening, those things die. Like those those add up also. So you, you combine tossing in things that died. Um so you, like maybe you have ten things die and toss fifteen things, for example. Um But yeah, so that's that's pretty awesome. Now, as, as a lot of y'all have, have mentioned, Nautilus, we'll talk about Nautilus and the Bilge Water cards. Nautilus kind of um, kind of counters Maokai. But you do have to have your Nautilus in your hand whenever they... Because Nautilus says, like, whenever you... I think, like, whenever Nautilus levels up, you put a whole bunch of things back into your deck, basically. Um, we'll talk about it later, but... Uh, you know, that's, this does obliterate champions from the deck, so it's not like you can just have, like, a, a Nautilus in your deck and expect to draw it later. Um, right, so if Maokai levels up, um, unless, and unless they have Nautilus, then they only have four turns to live, basically. They have to kill you in the next four turns, and each turn you're getting a 2-1 blocker, so... I'm not sure how competitive Maokai will be. We're, we'll kind of go through the rest of the toss cards or like some other toss cards. Um, but definitely seems like a pretty cool champion. Another one we'll play. All right, so the the champion spell for Maokai um, <clears throat> is Maokai's Sap Magic. I guess the thing about Maokai is Maokai does seem really good against the control decks, like against slow control decks, which there's a lot of slow control in Legends of Runeterra and like your Karma decks and stuff like that. And if you can like obliterate their deck and like the, the champions in their deck, um, the, you know, especially if you're just playing something that like they like their kind of deck is just trying to kill all of your uh, units. And so every time they kill your units, it helps level up your Maokai. Um, this could be a good answer to uh control decks all right so the um the champion spell is sap magic three mana burst toss three heal allies three so that means 
Um, that should mean your Nexus, too. As far as I know, that should be your Nexus and all of your units get healed three. And then you shuffle the Maokai into your deck. That's that's honestly a pretty good... Like, that's a pretty decent spell. Um, you know, you play, like, bigger toughness things. You get to block with them. Um, and then you can heal them with the Sat Magic while you toss three to towards uh, leveling up your Maokai. I'm not sure if it's, like good enough. I'm honestly not sure if that's good enough to just put in your Maokai deck. We'll have to see if there's like enough other toss cards. But it's okay. It's okay. It's it's reasonable. Alright, so let's go through the rest of the, sh the new Shadow Isles cards. Um... I go this way. I'll go back to the very beginning. Why does it do that? That's weird. All right, this. Oh, that's seven. What is going on? Anyway, Bark Beast, first one. That's weird. <clears throat> All right, so one mana, one one. The first time an ally dies, grant me plus two, plus two. It's, it's okay. There's a lot of good one mana cards in shadow isles and i'm not sure if like we're really playing bark beast to be honest um because it's like it's a one mana card that um that you know you don't want to attack with right away you know attack and block with right away you don't want it to be the first thing that dies like you don't want to you know send your one drop in before you have something else die to make it a three three um yeah the heal all all three yeah the, the, the heal all three allies isn't bad like it's it's it can it can definitely be playable or heal all allies three i'm not a big fan of this one drop though now bark beast has to be in, like i assume the bark beast has to be in play and then see an ally die and then it gets plus two plus two right um and then uh i like if, it, if this is just in your deck and you draw it later in the game and you've already had an ally die because it's later in the game, is this going to be a 1-mana 3-3? Three, three? I'm not exactly sure with that. Either way, even if even if that second one's the case, there's probably other 1-drops we want to be playing. Because decks like this, like you want, especially Maokai decks, like you want a whole lot of things to die, so you're probably wanting to play Hapless Aristocrat. Okay, it, it needs to be on the board. Um, yeah, I know it doesn't say C. So I, I just don't know. But I think you'd rather be playing like Hapless Aristocrat and Mage Seeker Conservator. Uh, I guess the, is Mage Seeker? That's... Never mind, I think that one's Demacia. Um, there's the other one mana Last Breath that whenever it dies, you creating another last breath i think you want to be playing those kind of cards not bark beast what anyway all right sapling tossed one mana burst speed summon a sapling next round this card's kind of crazy so you get the sapling is the again the the two one um, ephemeral challenger you get that next round so you can't just like play this burst speed and get a blocker um, I guess the best time to play this is, is like at the end of your opponent's turn whenever you just have one mana left and then they, they're like okay well they just have one mana left I'm going to play my you know my Lucian or whatever and then you're like boom sapling toss untap you summon your sapling and then you just get to attack with it um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy like one mana burst speed like you, your card doesn't have to be that good but I, I don't I don't know if we're if this wasn't ephemeral yeah I don't, I don't know if we're actually playing sapling toss though yeah the next round is pretty um, that's pretty pretty interesting that's 
I'm not sure if this is really that, you know, good enough or if, like, it will really see that much play, but um, that's a very interesting card. One mana burst speed, again, is just, it's so cheap. Like, there's, with being able to save spell mana, this is just so cheap. And, uh, yeah, I'll have to see. Like, maybe, maybe. Maybe, like, ephemeral decks that you, you know, want, like, this extra uh, ephemeral card. I don't know. It kind of lets you get, it lets you get like an, an extra attacker before you actually attack. If you play the, you know, before combat, if you play this at your opponent's end step. <clears throat> All right, Thorny Toad, two mana, one four, last breath, you toss two and heal your Nexus two. I like this card. Uh, two mana, one four is obviously not very good like we there is a two mana one four in demacia that sees zero play and it's just that's just not very good but if you're playing a maokai deck i kind of like this i like how um you know obviously you have the toss um in there and so like the thorny toe dies plus it tossed two more so that counts as three towards your 25 for maokai but i like that heal your nexus too because with your maokai deck you want the game to go really long the longer the game that goes the better for maokai because the more things die the more things you toss the then uh, the easier it is to level up Maokai, then your opponent's uh, deck gets obliterated, and then they run out of cards. And so you you want, basically, a Maokai deck would, would like both players to start at 50 life, you know, right? Like, life totals don't don't matter. You you just want as much life. Um, life totals, for, like, for your opponent's life total doesn't matter. You just want the game to go long, and you want your life total to be very high. So I like the heal your Nexus, too. Um... That is true. The, the one four in PNZ does see a lot of play. That has the attack uh, deal two trigger, so it's basically like a three four, kind of. But I basically I think that that heal two is an underrated part of that card. I think that uh, that's good. All right, blighted caretaker. This card is crazy. Three mana, two one. Whenever you play it, you kill an ally to summon two saplings. This card is incredible. This is, you know, like this is just awesome with the Cursed Keeper Undying package. You know, like this just gives you another Chronicler of Ruin, Ravenous Butcher. It gives you another thing like those um, to be able to use. And, uh, you know, you get two saplings. So, like, turn two, Cursed Keeper. Turn three, this. You kill your Cursed Keeper. So then you get a 4-4. Four, four, and then you also get two saplings. Um, yeah, these are good for Hecarim, right? Like, if we want... Yeah, if we're playing, like, Ephemeral, playing Shark Chariot, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, even at five mana, you can pay two drop a shark chariot play this kill the shark chariot get two saplings attack with the saplings bring back the shark chariot you like turn turn five you can uh play this with shark chariot um that's pretty awesome this card is great this card's gonna see a lot of play it is just like it is a two one so that's not gonna see, you know so that's not amazing but getting two of these two one challengers uh for killing your own ally that can you know that can be really nice and yeah again like the ephemeral stuff uh yeah leveling up hecarim it's also just a whole lot of creatures dying right if we're talking about like leveling up maokai leveling up like thresh or Callista, um like this card levels up Callista by itself right like you kill one ally you get two ephemeral saplings the saplings die so like this this is like like you know how people play um the uh, Unleashed Spirit, the two mana, you get three 1-1 one, one Ephemerals. People will just play that with Callista to level up Callista, even though that card isn't any good besides just doing that. This is like a card that's like just great, and then it also levels up Callista, so you don't have to put just, you know, crappy card in your deck. You can put just great cards in your deck. Um, and, and yeah, yeah, you just level up your Callista. This card has so much use in all of the Shadow Isles. This is going to be... This is, like, maybe the best card that we've read on, like, today so far. Like, this is maybe the best card. Or at least, like, the one that... It just has too much synergy. Like, just everywhere, the synergy is great. 
Um, yeah, putting three three bodies, six power for three mana. Even even though two of the bodies are ephemeral, but those ephemeral ones do have the challenger. Um, and there's just so much synergy for having things die. Um, you know, again, this helps Maokai, helps Thresh, helps Callista, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, this is just awesome. Um, and and the three mana slot, you know, definitely helps. Like it, that's really good follow up to like Cursed Keeper. You know, it it fills in the the gap between um, uh, between like Cursed Keeper and Chronicler of Ruin. Um, yeah, good card. Good card. Dead Bloom Wanderer. Three mana, three, two. Lifesteal when I'm summoned, toss three. Again, I like this card. You know, again, for as for toss cards, I think that's that's a really good design that these toss cards have the life gain aspects attached to them. You know, whether the two drop just gain the two life, this one, this card has lifesteal. Um, I think that's a I think that gaining life is is great for Maokai strategy for the toss strategy, and so I think that uh, yeah, you want to just delay the game, like I was saying. Um, obviously, I wish you know, wish this was like a three three. You know, three mana three two is not not special, but you know, sometimes you just gotta fill your deck with some toss cards. Um, yeah, keep that nexus healthy, uh, so you can try to make that game go long and obliterate their deck. Um, yeah, good good stall card. I like it. Good filler. All right, so yeah, we talked about Sap Magic, and I guess that's that's the thing about Sap Magic is that this is another good stall card. So it does it does really fit the toss strategy of all of your allies. You can heal them three, especially if you have some some bigger toughness blockers. Heal those, and of course heal yourself. And you know you're just using um, you're just using burst mana, and of course this can be a combat trick. If uh, you know, like if if you're gonna have something die in combat, or if it's gonna die to you know a, a removal spell, something like that. Like it does cost two more mana than um, health potion, but it heals all of your allies, and you also get the toss part. But it um, maybe pair it with a leveled up karma, toss six, heal allies six. Yeah, sap. Yeah, I'm I'm coming around on sap magic. I think I I initially underrated it i think it's that kind of health uh life gain is is exactly what you want for maokai hey conti yeah yep this is going up on youtube yep it'll be there um all right we got never glade collector five mana two four uh, whenever another ally dies, drain one from the enemy nexus. Okay, so this card's kind of like Phantom Prankster. All right, Phantom Prankster is three mana 03. Whenever another ally dies, deal one to the enemy nexus. So you're spending an extra two mana to get a 2-4, but now you're draining. So some things about that. Usually, you like two more mana for that. Like This probably isn't worth five mana. Like You'd rather have the three mana card for like really aggressive decks. But um, this can actually do a little bit in combat with two, you know being a 2-4. It's not like you want to be in combat with this kind of card. You want, because you basically just want Collector to stay alive. So you don't really want to risk this in combat. So like Prankster being an 0-3 wasn't really a big deal because you just don't really want this kind of card in combat. Uh, but at least this can get the 2-4. But you wouldn't want to just like basically, if, if Phantom Prankster cost five and was a two four, that would be worse than three as a two four. So like, like basically, what I'm saying is this is a downgrade, even though it's you know it's nice, but like just the extra mana that's a downgrade. The thing that can really help with Collector though, where we can start playing it a little bit more, is this drain effect. Again, if we're talking about a a, a Maokai deck, and you're just basically playing for the late game, that that life gain can be really nice. Um, uh. So yeah, like that that life gain can be really really nice um, for drain effects. If you're a prankster deck, do you play collector? Also, probably. Like if you're if you're playing like a, a dedicated prankster deck, 
and you like if your deck's really built around prankster you're probably in the market for playing another three copies of prankster that cost five mana and are two fours um so yeah you probably probably want probably want this like another prankster decks um but uh uh, yeah, spawning saplings. Yeah, if Ma Maokai can level up and start spawning saplings every single turn, then yeah, this is this can definitely help there. That drain is is pretty interesting. Even if the damage isn't that that great, just the the extra life um, could be really nice. So I could I could see this seeing a little bit of play, but again, at five mana, there's a lot of competition at five mana. Um, so, you know, it's it'll probably see about the same amount of play as Prankster does now, which is not a whole lot, but, um, you know, it can be useful in a, a wider variety of decks. Prankster is only in, like, super aggro. Um, you have a lot of things die, you need that damage. That's, that's, like, all Prankster can do. Collector can be in that kind of deck also as another top-end card, or can be in a more defensive uh, deck with, like, saplings and, and uh, ways to... Um, as like a, a life gain to try to help you stay alive longer. All right, and then we have Overgrown Snapvine. Seven mana, four, three. When you summon a follower, kill it to summon an Overgrown Snapvine. I think this card's really cool. Um, so you have to have a Snapvine in play Right, but then every follower that you play turns into a 4-3. Every single one. It turns into just a vanilla 4-3, well, I guess, that keeps other ones turning into vanilla 4-3s. But it's kind of even better than just turning it into, because it is you do kill it to summon. So you do get all of the last breath triggers. You do have uh, you do kill it for Maokai. Um, you know, so you can start having those things add up. Um this does like this is does seem to be like a great top end card for some of these other cards like you know you're gonna play your thorny thorny toad kill it you you get the last breath trigger immediately and then you it turns into the four three stuff like that like it does seem like it works really well there um um but yeah the, so i i like this overgrown snap vine quite a bit uh it, we, we're still talking about 7 mana 4-3 at the end of the day. So are we really putting it in Maokai decks? I don't know. Probably not, honestly. We're, we're honestly probably not putting this in deck. Like, you know, we're comparing this like Rekindler. Like, we'd rather probably have Rekindler at our 7 mana slot. And then like Vengeance and stuff like that. But it is a really cool design. That's what I'm basically saying. It's synergistic, has a cool design. But at the end of the day, it's probably not fitting in the decks. But I like it. All right, then finally we got a sea monster, eight mana, six five, terror of the tides. That has deep. Deep means that the that it gets plus three plus three if you have fifteen or less cards in your library. So, um, so you know if you if you have been tossing your deck, and uh, you're down to just fifteen or less cards, then this will enter in as a nine eight instead. Um, but this, this is pretty awesome. This is a powerful card. I, I expect to play some Terror of the Tides and, um, especially like we'll, we'll see more with Bilgewater, but sea monsters seem to be like a, a real thing. Like there, there can actually be some sea monster decks or like a sea monster deck, but, uh, attack, give enemies minus two, minus zero this round and your sea monster allies have fearsome. It's. It's clutch that Terror of the Tides has its own, like, it is also, it's a sea monster, so it gives itself fearsome. If we compare this to, like, Scythria, you know how, like, Scythria gives all of your, um, all of your other creatures, it gives it fearsome, but Scythria itself is not fearsome, and so, therefore, whenever you attack, your opponent basically always has something that wouldn't normally be able to block all the, your fearsome creatures and so it just automatically blocks Scythria. So Scythria never actually gets to do damage. You know, like when you play Sith when you play with or against Scythria, you know Scythria never connects. This thing can actually connect. This thing will give itself fearsome and give all your other sea monster allies fearsome. So this can actually connect. 
especially whenever it attacks, you give your enemy units minus two, minus zero. Do you, that makes that so difficult to block Fearsome. So they had to have five toughness originally, or five power originally, um, and then they go down to three, and then it can block. Um, that's like the only way uh, you can actually have things block your sea monsters. There are, there are some ways to make this cheaper also, which we'll talk about. There's like a card, a, a sea monster card that will make this uh, cheaper even. Um, but yeah, I, I really like Terror of the Tides. I think this is a, a really good quality card. Um, anyway, there we go. So that's, that's, um, Shadow Isles. So that's the, that's the last, uh, region for this section of the review. So far, so good. A lot of interesting stuff. You know, we spent a good hour and a half here just talking about these 30 cards. We're going to do, uh, three more parts. This was part one, um, that we're going to have starting with PNZ up next, um, this was pretty good. This was pretty good. All right, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Let me know which cards are you really excited about? What do you want me to build around right away? And um, you know, what card, you know, what do you think of like these different cards? Like, you know, what cards I overrate, underrate, all that kind of stuff. But anyway, thank you so much for watching the Rising Tides complete set review, our first part here. And I will see you for the next video.